Hello and welcome to my video. That's me there. Hello. Um, now, the other day on Facebook, I put up a post um, which was uh, a picture, uh, well, a sketch that I did, a sort of oil sketch, and I foolishly boasted um, that I can do this in 10 minutes. I mean, it's true that I can do it in 10 minutes. Um, and then I said, I'll put up a series of videos. So um, there's me thinking I'll have a nice quiet weekend. Uh, and in fact, I'm not going to have a quiet weekend because I'm going to show you how to do this, which should be on the screen now, in around 10 minutes. And I've, I've set the timer. Well, I hope I've set the timer. I'm not a big phone user, but um, in fact, I never call anyone. It's just in the car in case I break down and it's useful for looking at videos to send me to sleep. Anyway, I've set the timer. I hope you can see it. Maybe you can't. It says five minutes. Oh, whoops. It says, oh, I've just cleared it. That's clever, isn't it? Um, no, I haven't. No, it's still there. Okay. Um, I'm going to change the focus on the camera so that you can actually see it. There we are, 10 minutes. So. The thing about this sort of painting, this is the, the, why these are useful and the reason I'm doing it quickly. Um, if you want to skip forward past all this waffle, it's up to you, but uh, it, may, it may be worth listening to. But the, um, the reason I do it is not to show off. It's nothing to do with that. It's about um, giving you the confidence. In other words, if I can do it, you can do it. And the thing that will make you do it is practice. So here we are. This has got three coats of gesso, as usual, and I've sanded it, and it's as smooth as it can get. And um, in fact, it's still got some dust on it from the sander. It probably won't matter. I will knock it off. There we are. And uh, I'll be using a lot of paper and one brush and the colour that I'm using is a is um, red ochre with sap green a bit of Payne's grey in it maybe in a few places but uh, not immediately and I'm just mixing up my sludge colour here and as usual uh, just to answer the odd question right how much how much um, oil am I putting in not a lot and this is how how not a lot it is in other words if i do that nothing comes off the brush it's mobile but not drippy don't want it dripping all over the place right so let's get the timer going i mean i hope to do it in 10 minutes it may it may take a little bit longer but it'll be close anyway just try and get my phone the right way up so i'm going to hit the start button now here we go and it's counting down I'm not quite sure what it's going to play when it hits 10 minutes. I hope it's not too embarrassing because it's a long time since I used it. So let's get going. Let's get some tone in the middle there. And then let's get rid of it. And then let's get rid of a little bit more. But only at the bottom. And then gradually tapering off as I go up. So, as you can see, slightly lighter there. In fact, I'm going to just change that to a bit more horizontal. Like so. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, wipe my hands and then load the brush up with a bit more and just start making shapes. So let's say we're going to have, uh, you know, if we're doing something similar to what I've just shown you, we're going to need some trees, aren't we? So we're going to need a tree one side and a tree the other side. And let's just make them... So it's a little bit like... Um, so in fact, somebody described it as it, saying it would look... Not described it, but uh, said that it would look good on a greetings card. Maybe it would. A, bit, a little bit Victorian, I guess. But uh, there you go. Why not? So let's just have some nice dark down here. Adding a little bit more Payne's grey. Oh, the oil I'm using, by the way, is poppy oil. I think I want some darkness at the back there. Poppy oil, the only reason I'm using poppy oil is because it's the one that I've got in front of me. There is no deep and meaningful reason. 
um, oh, I quite like poppies, but that's not the reason. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there. I'm putting in a few, let me just, uh, all right, just look in the camera. So I've got a, I've got a basic tree shape. I've put some dark here for later. I think we'll have a little bit there because that'll be a clump of trees. And in fact, what I'm trying to do also is kill the white. Don't want too much white showing through there. And then over here, we'll just make a sort of mess. Now, what I was saying about the confidence that this will give you. If you can do something that looks interesting in 10 minutes, just imagine what you can do in an hour, if you don't rush too much. But again, you know, as I said, this is confidence building. A little bit of light on the tree there, a little bit of light on the back edge of the tree, just there, just to sort of bring it out a little bit. And then I think over the other side of the painting, we've got seven minutes and three seconds left. The, the um, uh, I guess another good thing about this sort of um, technique is it adds a liveliness to your picture that you may not get if you paint too slowly. So let's just have a look at it. Stuff going on down there. Stuff going on is quite a good way of describing foliage because it is a lot of stuff going on. Let's have a branch over back there. Let's have another one here. Let's have one there. In fact, let's smudge. In fact, no, we won't smudge. We're going to go slightly faster, get a little bit more brown because I think it's sort of quite wintry. There's some brown up there. You may not see the difference in colour, but I hope you do. A little bit there. Foliage hanging over. A little bit more, get rid of some of these white bits. Don't get, all, don't get rid of all of them, some of them are quite nice. And then a bit more green and a bit more oil. And we are approaching the halfway point so I think over over the back here I'm going to have to have a hill with trees on it it has to be done it's just the sort of thing that I would have in one of my paintings don't worry about the tree you can go into the tree what should we have let's have a path going meandering across there or something meandering across there anyway and let's have another tree on the horizon there or some or a bump let's have a horizon bump over there, over the side here, I'm not going to worry too much about that, let's just make it solid. In fact, let's lose those branches, don't need them at the moment. Right, piece of paper. Now we've got exactly five minutes left, so I'm going to start laying into the um, into this to try and get a feeling of wood. Okay, a little bit there. What should we have on the other side? Let's, um, let's twinkle that up a little bit. Let's have a really bright bit of wood there. Probably get it done faster if I don't talk. Oh, I don't know though. Does talking actually slow you down? I mean, it can make you, um, it can make you pause to concentrate occasionally. I've got to keep switching my phone on to see what the time is doing. Although I guess I'll know when time's up because there'll be a some some kind of noise. Just wonder what it is. I honestly don't remember what I put in the phone. It could be trumpets. I hope it's nothing rude. There we go. So a little bit of land, a little bit of landscape in the background. Let's get uh, let's get that blurred down a bit and lose some of that white, a little bit more there, a bit of texture. It's a while since I did something this fast actually. It's uh, quite fun, I'd say, right, 3 minutes 30 seconds to go. Let's get a hint of some branches. Once the um, once the ten minutes is up, let's just, just fix anything up there at the moment. Just 
once the 10 minutes up I'll slow down and start to put in a few sort of what would you call them pretend details I suppose more. more foliage Not bothering the clouds, obviously. I don't think I have time for them. Right, so we've got two minutes thirty. Two minutes thirty seconds. Let's have some spindly branches and stuff coming up here. A few little saplings in the background. Just can't resist the odd sapling, you know. And uh, texture down here. A bit more foliage going on down there. I think a little bit of light there wouldn't hurt. And some stuff. A bit more stuff coming up the edge. What else can we do? Let's break that up a little bit in there. Well, once this is once this is done, once the alarm goes off, which is going to be in one minute and forty-three seconds. Um, I'll stop and talk about uh, certain parts of the painting that you can do to make it even more interesting. And what I want to do before the hooter goes off is just get some kind of lead in through here. So let's just break that a little bit and bring some kind of path down there. It's not necessarily, a, you know, uh, a hard path, if you know what I mean. Like this is a path. It's just a little bit of light, and I'll add sort of pseudo details to that in a minute. So the base of this tree here, right, comes down there, and it sort of breaks into the ground here. It's a very strange way to describe it. It breaks into the ground. Okay, so we've got 50 seconds left. What should we do now? Let's um, just get texture on it, I think. Texture, texture, texture. A little bit more over there. A few bits here, breaking up these thin spindly trunks. A little bit of softening just on the edge of that tree there. And um, I think we're probably almost there. In fact, we've got 28 seconds left. What can I do now? I think I would calm down these light bits. Just a bit. And I'll use them in a minute. So there's the guts of a painting in 10 minutes just to give you something to work on and the hoot is going to go off in seven seconds so in that five seconds i'm just going to put a few more skinny bits coming up there like so and as you can pro probably hear that's the end of my 10 minutes so i'm still alive i hope you are too and uh now that I've got the guts of it down, I think that's um, challenge over. But I'll start showing you now how you can make that, well, hopefully, even more interesting. So what it does, it gives you a it gives you a quick feeling for the balance of the picture. So now uh, the the alarm's off. Now it won't go it won't go off again. I hope it won't anyway. I'll start tidying it up a little bit. A little bit more strong light hitting the tree there probably wouldn't hurt. And um, uh, in fact, just to make that a little bit more look atable, is that a word? I don't know. Let's add a few bits growing off the tree like so just to add sort of richness richness to it um, and then I think we'll just connect some of the bases of these to the tree just by just leading them into the into the wood if that makes sense I hope so doesn't matter if it doesn't you'll see what I'm doing anyway so. Let's have another, another branch there. 
So there we go. That's um, I'm reasonably pleased with that. I'm, it's probably, what it's taught me is um, first of all, um, it's good to go back occasionally and do things like this for me anyway. Uh, because when I was, you know, if you've been to my channel before, you know what I used to do. I used to be a visualizer, which meant um, working for ad agencies, you know, being a, I guess you could say a quick scribbler to get ideas on paper quickly, sometimes in front of the client, quite often in fact, which is nerve wracking. But it, you know, it focuses the mind and it enables you to learn how to do stuff really quickly. And, and, and it's always a good thing to not, um, not think too much. Just let, just let your instincts take over. I, I'm one of these people um, who I suppose some people, <laughs> how do I do this? Uh, some people would find me really irritating, but um, what, what I'm aiming at is um, I, I, I am sure that pretty well anyone can do this. It's just that, um, you know, you've got to know a few tricks uh, and you've got to believe you can do it. Once you believe it, everything becomes much easier. And it doesn't matter how much you believe you can't, this will get some hackles going. It's like, it's like me saying, you know, you, you can do this. Now I say that, but um, if someone said to me, can you learn the guitar? I would say absolutely not. And I, I think, you know, the fact that I'm not interested in playing the guitar is a big factor. I'd like to wake up one morning and be able to play it, but of course that's not going to happen. Um, And, I, and I'm sure there are some people out there who are immensely talented at doing that um, and maybe everything came to them easily. Those are the people who may understand what I'm talking about, I think. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're good at something, it usually means that you have a, a, a healthy obsession with it, maybe. So uh, that certainly helps. So there we are. I'm going to, once I've sort of gone as far as I want to go on this, which is going to be soon, I'm going to move on to a painting I did. In fact, it was a couple of years ago and somebody reminded me the other day on YouTube. They said, where, where is the second part to this? And, you know, me being a bit of a numbskull occasionally, I do forget stuff. Um, I didn't do the I didn't do the follow up. So uh, I've got to find the painting, which I think is in the other room. And um, I'll do some quick glazing on it. The other thing I want to tell you about is, is the lessons that I, um, I do on Zoom. My next lesson is going to be interesting. Now I'll either paint a tree, which is the easy way out. Not quite sure yet because I only get an hour, you see, to, to um, teach people. I could go on longer, but uh, you know, I've got to watch my exhaustion levels. and. Um, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be, so I want to sort of make sure I can do what I want to do in, in the hour. And so a tree would be the easy option. I can bang out a tree in an hour. It's not a problem at all. Um, but I, I, I'm toying with the idea of painting a little bit of a painting by Vermeer. And I'll put that on the screen about now. And what I want to do, I would probably have to draw it before the lesson, so you won't see the drawing part. Unless, of course, I video it and insert it in. Yeah, maybe I could do that. I could insert it later. Um, but it's a detail. And as you can see, it's, um, it's not much of the painting. It, you can see the whole painting, and I hope, hopefully on the screen I've shown you the, the bit that I intend to paint during the lesson. So uh, that might, it may be that. I'm not sure yet. Depends on a few factors, you know, as I said, can I actually do it in an hour? Sometimes I do overstretch a bit and um, that may not be a good thing. Okay, so anyway, basically most of this painting was, you know, 10 minutes. And um, I hope it gives you a little bit of confidence. It seriously is not me showing off. It's not, it's not, I'm not into that, there's no reason to. It doesn't get anyone anywhere. 
but it shows you um, how, how quickly you can start something and, and end up with quite a nice relaxed, you know, there's no, there's no, um, it's not over detailed, over finicky, it's just uh, slapped on. And the thing is to maintain that look. You don't want a painting that looks, look, you know, as if it's like, um, how do I put it? Um, like you've really struggled to paint every detail, which, you know, is okay if you want to do that sort of thing. But uh, if you're a learner, start something loose. That's my recommendation anyway. Right, so that's that on that one. And um, I'm going to move with the timer away so that I can lose it and wonder where the heck I put it later. Give my hands a wipe and I'll be back with another painting on here in a second. Okay, um, ultramarine blue, uh, a bit of primary yellow, and um, Japanese red. And I'm just going to do a little bit of glazing on this uh, next painting. This isn't actually, I just realised, this isn't actually the one the person was asking about on YouTube. This painting is another one that I should have finished off and I didn't so that's what I'm going to do um, so it, um, you'll, uh, unless I edit it in the right place you'll, you'll have already seen the picture um, this isn't really going to be um, you know heavy duty painting I'm just going to smear on a few colours uh, and just see how it goes really it may be okay may not if it isn't you know what I'll do I'll wipe it off Am I going to add any white to the picture? I think probably I might do actually. Um, so let's add a bit of titanium white to the mix. I've used titanium white for, oh, well I can't remember when. Um, I, I've probably used zinc white a few times. People say that zinc white is whiter. To me they look, both look pretty white, so don't worry about it. Um, I used to use flake white in the old days, um, but of course now it's, well I think you can get it, but it's, um, uh, it's not easy to get because it contains lead. So let's go. I just want to fill the screen with it a little bit. So I'm going to work at the horizon level to start with. I'm just going to get a bit of warmth in it, which will show through the trees uh, also uh, on the... Um, right hand uh, right hand side I just turn my get my camera in the right position sorry about this okay I think you've got the whole thing in the frame apart from the sky which I'm not worried about at the moment okay so that just gives you an idea of the um, uh, well the detail that isn't there there is no detail and uh, let's just see what we can do, really. So I think um, warmth through there, um, meaning orange, yellow, that sort of stuff. Not too much, because I actually quite like, I don't know, there's certain things I like about this. At the top there, I'm going to be um, adding the blue. And I'll do a little bit of fiddling around with some of these branches here, just to give you the illusion of uh, detail. So I think the first colour... That I'm going to chuck on here. Let's find a, an untainted brush. There we go. I've still been, um, if you know me, you, you might remember, I don't know, but I, I was thinking of doing a video about a day in the life of an artist, that particular artist being me, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm still sort of slightly I don't know embarrassed to do it because you know my life I, I, it's, it's quite boring <laughs> and um, why should I inflict that on anyone you know I paint I paint a few pictures I um, 
I used to design a lot of books. In fact, I might have been the, the busiest book designer in Europe, for all I know. I was doing at one stage. Uh, almost one a day. So, um, but that's all ended now. I um, still will do the odd book, but not, not to the extent that I used to. So, uh, yeah, my life may be a bit boring for a video. We'll see. I don't know how much people would want to see me walking back and forth from the house to the garage to put gesso on a piece of wood. Uh, incidentally, this is wood, plywood. Now, I know someone's going to say what sort of wood. It's called a kumi. That'll be in the description below. It's five millimetres thick uh, in inches. That's about that thick. Um, and um, it's really good wood and as you can see it's not warped it had gesso on it three coats of gesso it's absolutely completely flat so uh, if you have warping I don't know it could be that you're not using a good enough wood don't use pine um, because pine basically uh, is it's not wonderful plywood you know it sort of falls apart well, let's just see what we can do in there. How does that look? Just a quick look in my camera. Well, even that's interesting. I mean, it's gone from an uh, almost monotone, toneless painting to a almost monotone, toneless painting with a bit of orange on it. So maybe that's all the excitement we need. Who knows? Let's just see what happens when I sort of push that up there a bit. Bear in mind, when you do this, this orange has got to be the same height there as here as there. Don't follow the landscape because the sky won't. The sky is its own entity. So, you know, if the orange goes up to that level, it's got to be that level all the way across. Otherwise it will look silly. So there we are. There's a little hint of warmth on there. Let's just, let's just play with it a bit. Add a bit more yellow, and I'm going to put the yellow, which will make it more orange, and I'll put it down there because it would be a little bit obscured there. And I might like just show just that bit, just a little bit stronger. And of course, it won't go up there, it'll be down here because that's the level it's at. You may get fragments, you know, reflecting that, that go up the picture, but that's about it. So that's sort of quite interesting. I'm not going to overdo this picture. Um, and I want to keep the video short. I'll be doing another um, 10 minute sketch soon. Uh, it won't obviously won't be the same composition as the one I just did. It'll be slightly different, but it's just, you know, bear in mind it's just to show you what you can do without worrying about it too much. And it's, you know, I think, personally, a very good way to get started. Let's just extend that just a little bit. Okay. I'm reasonably happy with that. I could be Mr. Exciting. Okay, I'm going to be Mr. Exciting. I haven't been, I haven't been exciting for quite a few years, so I think let's um, see if we can do something about that. So I'm putting a little bit more paint and less oil. That was a lot of oil I put in that to start with because I just wanted a stain. I don't want to want to cover anything up. I'm going to be a little bit exciting. Okay, so what I said a minute ago about, you know, you're going to have the odd bit coming up. But if I had a sudden wall of orange up here, you might say, well, why isn't it showing through there? And why isn't it stronger here? Well, you know, to some extent, it's going to be hidden by the foliage a little bit, but um, I just don't think it would be as interesting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for the fragmented sky a little bit. So let's just strengthen that there. I'm going over the edge of the tree, but it doesn't matter because I can always just wipe, wipe the orange off the leaves a little bit. Or if I really want, I could put some on there. So there's a hint of it showing through without screaming in your face about it. It's just slightly warmed up. 
enough to tell you what you know that that might be the case so up here i think what we might do is we might just sort of break the sky up so that we've got you know we've got an angle up here with, this, with the white cloud which you can't see so i'm going to have to move back a bit should be able to see that now i think you can however don't really want to do it like that what i want to do is keep me out of the picture as much as possible just so that you actually see the painting okay so what i'm after here is um because of this angle it's just a little bit of white paint on there i suppose i could start to sort of bring make it yeah let's go for a fiery fiery sunset so let's start to bring that up here at an angle not straight because the light from there is hitting these clouds and that's what you might get if you're not sure if that's what you might get do it anyway and if it looks good keep it if it looks absolute rubbish take it away oh i just picked up a little bit of paint on the brush uh, from the um, edge you know the gripper at the top from what i was doing a few minutes ago uh, i don't particularly want that mixing with the orange but you know no turps just give it a quick wipe and there you are back to clean color in a minute and i put some blue up there so there we are we've got a bit of a bit of orange catching the, catching the sky I don't want it to look as though it's avoiding the trees. You see what I mean? It's very subtle. We've got cloud, we've got cloud there. So I think I have to just put in a little bit in there, just to convince the viewer that the sky is actually behind the trees and um, really exists. So there we go. It's back. Okay, we've got a little bit. Uh, do it, does it show in you in the camera? It does top right. There's a little bit of white up here. So I think we'll just have a little bit of red catching that. Well, orange actually, not red. I think that's enough. And um, there we go. So I'm going to adjust the camera again so you can see what I'm going to do up there with the blue. Once I've done that, I'll come down here and show you what I'm going to do there. I just moved the lights a bit, you might notice that. Um, there was a bit of a reflection, but uh, not so bad now. There's a question for you. Should I cut all this waffling out when I do things like that? Um, or do you want to know? Maybe it's useful to someone who's thinking of making videos, you know. Lighting is very important, obviously. I use a... Um, I'll, I'll show you at the end, actually. I'll show you what the light looks like. Because people have asked about it. In fact, yesterday someone asked about it. It's Chinese and it's LED lights made by a company called Newer. I think it's N-E-E-W-E-R. They're not bad. I mean, they're a bit, um, a bit tinny, if you know what I mean. But it sort of does the job reasonably well. Okay, so let's get some blue. Now this is ultramarine. I'm probably not even going to use a brush for this. I'm just going to tip a little bit of oil on the palette. Grab a bit of ultramarine blue, which is one of my favourite blues. I really like royal blue, but ultramarine, if I'm going to have a dark blue, that's the one I tend to lean towards. So there we are, we've got some blue on here. It's not, um, this is sort of, you know, there's no careful brushwork, that's what I'm struggling to say. I'm just applying a bit of blue. If I used a brush, there would be brush marks, of course. If I use paper and keep, keep the motion in a sort of circular, uh, motion um, you won't get brush marks 
and of course I'm working on a dry painting so there's a very little chance of the colours mixing and um, causing mud that's probably it I don't really want to put much blue on there so let's go and have a look at the bottom of the picture and what I'm going to do for that is um, I'm going to use a, a rigger very fine brush and um, do a little bit of uh, pretend detail okay a rigger now I've got one lying around here somewhere that's probably well overdue for a proper clean but it might do might do for what I want and um, of course uh, you know as I I've shown you many times. A rigger is a very uh, fine brush. There's one there. Now it had a little bit of paint on it that was, um, it's not quite dry, so I've just applied a little bit of oil to it. Just give it a quick wipe a couple of times. I will wash it when I finish. I'll wash it with some uh, detergent. Let's get that in focus. So there we are. It's quite quite a thin, spindly little brush. And let's see what we can do. So all I'm going to do on this, I'm not mixing up any fancy colour. All I'm going to do is um, add a bit of white, a few white highlights. I could add a bit of yellow to it, but. Um, why aren't I? Because I don't want to. That's good enough, isn't it? So there we are. Let's see what we can do in here. We've already got lots of twigs. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's get, first of all, let's get rid of that little bit of orange just there. I don't want that. It's actually red. Not orange. And there's a bit there. Let's get rid of that. As you can probably see on the paper there. So I've already got some highlights showing. So what I want to do is just sort of enhance them a little bit. So let's just... Uh, Let's just let the mind wander and see what we can do. So if we just put a little bit of, you know, the light's sort of basically coming from that side more than this side. So if I just put the odd spot or two of um, highlit or highlighted detail, which of course is not there. There's nothing there. It's just paint. And these are just blobs. Keep thinking of it that way. You're applying blobs. One goes out of place like that one, either make it into something or get rid of it. So I'm going to go for the get rid of it approach, like so. So there you go, there's a bit of light catching the tree. If you think, and I, as I am thinking, it's a little bit too bright, just get a piece of paper and just touch it, get it off. And it'll, it'll sort of calm it down a bit. Now you may not see that's calmed down much, but uh, it is. And uh, let's just tickle away. I'm going to add that little nodule there. This is just sort of, you know, just more for your entertainment. <laughs> I don't know whether you'll learn much from this. I hope you do, actually. So if I want to sort of attach a branch to that, I find it easier to work to it rather than from it and away, because I'm going down to it. It's much easier than turning around, getting getting the angles right. If I if I work to it, I can see my target. I can start up here. Let's get a bit more paint. I can start up here and then sort of aim down. So um, let's have another one there. Just have something really catching the light here, like so. I'm just going to go for it and. Um, at my normal speed. <clears throat> I'll zoom back in a minute and it'll look, it'll look um, a lot more interesting. Well, I hope so, anyway. You never know, do you? It could look like complete rubbish. I'm just going to change my approach slightly here, just adding a little bit of... Um, well, it's actually the uh, sap green red ochre, Payne's grey, and a bit of white just to get a grey 
I can actually do, doing a few grey ones now. Of course, they're only going to really show up against dark uh, backgrounds, so you've got to be a little bit careful where you put them. And uh, let's have a little bit there, just, just to make it look like complicated wood. But I'm going to backtrack on a couple of things, and just sort of mute down some of this white a little bit more. Because I know you do get white wood that, you know, is rotten and dead. And, um, it can be quite striking as the light hits it. But I think I might have gone a little bit too close to white. And of course he said, covering up his error, the thing is, have the ability to change your mind, go back over something and make it work. So I'm going to do that. Just mute them a bit. I like the idea of them being bright, but I think I should have possibly not gone quite so bright. That's a little better. I think I can probably live with that. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to, just for the heck of it, I'm going to try adding yellow, because I know it'll work. Just make it with a slightly yellow tinge. Um, and this is primary yellow with a little bit of white. And enough yellow, um, a big problem, enough oil to make it mobile. So let's have, because we've got orange here, why don't we have a little bit of yellow? I hope it shows on the video, just a touch of it in there, just so that. You may get the idea that there's light reflect, reflecting across. I don't want to go bright red on the tree there, but, you know, I could um, just put in a hint of yellow. I might do it. I'm not doing anything over there. I want to keep attention sort of here. And um, just get some marks in there that look as though they might be bits of twiggery. Uh, sort of twiggy-ish. What else can we do? I suppose, I'll tell you what I'll do just for the fun of it. I'm going to get, um, maybe I can do it with this. Okay, so this is the brush I used, obviously, for the orange. A little bit more up there. I'm going to just sort of try something. I'm going to add, because we've got some sort of grasses and, we've, you know, we've got foliage. Maybe I should add some red to the foliage. Let's just see what happens when we do that. It may be okay, it may not. So let's just get a few um, a few bits of sort of brown leaf in there. I'm putting it on quite loosely, not liberally, you know, there's not a lot of paint there, but loosely, just to sort of play the stream, I suppose, see what happens. Just a bit more. We've got a little bit of... Oh, you can't see it. Typical. I don't know why you put up with me. Okay, let's um, show you what I was doing. That'll probably help, wouldn't it, as it's an instructional video. I apologise for that. Uh, so all I, all I did was this. I'm going to reenact it. All I did was that. Jiggled my hand around a bit. So let's just put a bit more in so you can see the jigglery. And... Um, once I've got it on there, I've got a few bits right on the edge. Just a few, just a hint. I always like the idea of, you know, uh, a suggestion is all you need sometimes. Okay, so now it's on there, all I'm going to do is just sort of mute it a little bit and smudge it, see what, see what happens. I'll pull the camera back in a minute, you'll get a view of the whole thing. So there's just a hint. A hint in there. What else should we do? I think... Yeah, I think the grass at the base of the tree... So what have we got down there? We've already got quite a lot of red and green. So what I'm going to do now is get some sap green. 
and what is already on the brush and just sort of play around with it a bit. Let's just uh, add a bit more sort of reddish. Something um, that you may find interesting. If you paint a picture that is just green, I mean like, you know, green, um, without red in it, it can look very flat. It's always good to get red in your green. And by red, I mean browns. You can have a little bit of, you know, bright red in there some, somewhere from something, if you know what I mean. But um, generally, green needs brown in it to actually look like nature. So that's what I'm attempting to do here. And of course I can, as well as put paint on, I can take it off just to show what was already underneath there. Hopefully you might see that. And I think I'm going to sort of do something with this area. I don't quite like that. I think it's a little bit, um, a bit floppy. It needs a little bit more structure. So let's just move the camera over that way a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Hopefully that's going to be focused. Good. So, um, let me think how I'm going to do that. I'm going to just get some, um, you know, <laughs> it sounds like I repeat everything so much. Doesn't it? I'm going to just get some sap green and red ochre because it is the colour of a lot of untamed nature. <clears throat> basically what I'm doing, uh, I suppose in its simplest terms, is I'm putting in the shadows so that I can... Uh, have something to work out of or onto. Right, so what have we got here? Um, we've got like a hedge thing. There's a bit of a barrier before you go off into the distance over there. So I just want to sort of make that a little bit, um, a little bit more guts to it. So I think it needs something there. Now by doing that, you've got something going on there and something going on there. Rather than just the, you know, few, you've got two ways to look at it. So let's do something here just to strengthen this edge. Let's just pull something out there. Going into the um, orange deliberately because they will mix nicely as long as I don't overdo it. There we go. So there we've got a nice slightly in the distance, a bit of a tree leaning across. I wonder whether I should zoom in a bit more. I oh, know, I think you, you can probably see that. Okay, so we've got this one here. I think um, I'm leaning towards making it slightly bigger, just to bring it up so that it breaks the sky slightly, like so. And of course you can see through it. Now you may not see right through it, so I'm going to change that. I'm just going to put a little bit of dark on it, just to sort of give it a little bit of structure. There we go. Right, so that's now well in front of the horizon. Let's see what else we can do. Let's get, uh, I, like, I like the textures in there, but I, think, I seriously think the top edge just needs to be... I don't know, what, what's the word I'm after? Oomphed. Will be oomphed up, strengthened a bit, and hopefully made a little bit more interesting. Quite like that. Okay, and then let's put some marks on the path. Just should double check you can actually see the path. Yep, yeah, you can. So that goes off round, maybe it goes round the corner, I don't know. Uh, just a few shapes there which won't stay like that because I will be just giving them a quick wipe. Yep, they look slightly alien so I'm going to um, de-alienate them and the only, way, only thing I'm doing is just toning down a bit it was a little bit 
a bit too sudden. And I think that does. That's okay because we've got the magic thing. This is one of these things I, I you know, I try to get dark, light, dark, light. Always works. Okay, now that may be it for this. I certainly don't want to overdo it. And I don't want to do this all the way along the picture uh, because it'll just get, you know, too tedious. Just bring the, bring, bring the viewer into one spot. I suppose I could add a light spot on the ground. Um, let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there we are. We've got the ground. I'm just going to try and lead people in a bit. So I'm just going to sort of... I've got some yellow. I'm just going to put a hint of yellow in there. See how that works. Yeah, that's okay. Quite like that. Just, I don't know, what is it? It's a yellow plant. And in fact, I'll tell you what I'm also going to do. And then I'm really stopping. I'm just going to get um, a bit more yellow on a very textured bit of paper. So I screwed the pa paper up, scrunched it up. Whoa, there we are. Um, and uh, just to make as much texture on it as possible. And just pick up a little tiny bit of yellow. And let's just add... I don't do flowers, okay? I'm not a flower person, but... I suppose I could do a little hint of something just in that part of the painting, just a just a hint of something growing there, you know, whatever it is. That's where it is. There we go. Talk about minimalist. All right then. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Just want to say one thing. Um, uh, I do, as you know, I do Zoom classes. If you want to come to a Zoom class, I'll put a link down below my website which will send you off to um where will it send you goes to my website it tells you about my lessons anyway and there's all kinds of info there about things and stuff to click on and what have you be nice to see you at a lesson and um whoops there we go I'll just change that the other thing is um i'd like to say thank you to my patreon followers um You've been very generous, and without you, uh, my cat would be starving. So I am incredibly indebted to you. It does make life a lot easier. Um, what else? What else can I tell you? I think that really is it. So I'm going to go. Thanks for being here. Hope you've enjoyed it, and um, hope you've learnt something. Uh, if you have liked this, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.